Oh, hey, bitch. Welcome back to my channel. I have been sitting here scrolling over on TikTok getting ready to film this video, and I have seen so many people talking about this veneer fairy thing that is going on, and my question is, why are people dumb enough to go to someone, one, named the veneer fairy that they're finding on social media, but two, going to someone who is not licensed to do anything up in somebody's mouth to get their f***ing teeth fixed? To get some f***ing fake veneers stuck onto their teeth. There are so many people that are having horror stories that are uploading videos over on TikTok talking about how their teeth are literally falling out of their head. I am not going to sit here and pretend that I am feeling bad for people that thought it was a good idea to pay between $2,000 and $3,500 to some random person over on Instagram to get a full set put up in their mouth. I am a firm believer that you should definitely try to save money in this lifetime, but there are some things that you should probably not look for like that big of a discount on and should actually do some research into it. Plastic surgery, fillers and Botox, dentistry, any cosmetic procedure actually. And correct me if I'm wrong down in the comment section, if you go out of the country to get your teeth done, like a dentist here in the States is not even going to want to touch you. What is the rule when you go and sit in somebody's kitchen and have them plaster some shit onto your teeth that made them fall out? Is a dentist going to want to help you or is it the same thing? Look, I understand that dentistry here in the States is ridiculous it should not cost what it does but i also do not think that people should be trying to save money on getting some veneers everybody wants to have a perfect smile i understand that 100 percent. but girl the shit that can go wrong in your mouth that can lead to other things like it's not worth it it's now time for everybody's favorite part of the video where i give you guys an update on what is going on in the world of gypsy rose blanchard i know you guys are so happy that I'm going to talk about her right now because you guys just have not heard about her enough. But I need to give you guys an update because I was scrolling over on Twitter as one does. And it's, are people calling it Twitter still or are we calling it X? So are people trying to like actually make the X thing happen? Because I feel like I always call it Twitter. I'm like, I don't like X, right? But there's an update because allegedly Gypsy Rose is out around $6,000 from TikTok because her husband, the ex, the one that she's trying to divorce, the one that held her down in prison. People do not like when I say that he held her down in prison. <laughs> Girl, whatever. Well, apparently she was owed $6,000 from TikTok. It went into his account and he is not returning calls, is not trying to meet up or nothing. He's taking that money. He said, bitch, I held you down. I put a lot of money on your canteen when you were up in the slammer. I'm getting my payback. James Charles is getting talked about for a few different reasons over on TikTok. But before I get into that, I want to play this video clip for you guys right here on the screen because this is James singing that new song that is allegedly about some straight guy that didn't want him. They used him as an experiment. What is going on with him? The reason that I want to play this clip for you guys is because there is no sound you do not hear his actual voice can you tell me how cringe that is the way that he is like moving his mouth looking like he is tweaking that is exactly what it looks like i'm not saying that he is but it does look like the jaws are kind of like trying to eat itself girl i don't know what in the jessica simpson moment he is trying to have but it is not cute and then i thought i was like is he trying to have like a jojo siwa kind of like karma moment where people are just talking about it because it's so cringe but if you go back to literally any time that james charles has croaked out a ditty on social media he does that same mouth thing what is happening he looks like he's in pain he looks like he's gnawing his jaw i don't know i don't know it's just it's so cringe to me it is it's like watching people dance over on tiktok if you turn the sound off guys the immediate cringe a good example of that actually is if you watch the jojo siwa karma choreography i mean it's cringe when you have the sound on but if you turn the sound off it is so extra cringe here's james doing it come along hey. It was diabolical. Okay, so James Charles had a video made about him over on TikTok by one of his supporters, immediate red flag. And she was talking about some giveaway that she won that James did back in December of 2023. He was giving away one of his painted palettes. So she won in December. It is now the end of April. We are going into May and she still has not received this palette. And there was like a lot of drama that has been wrapped up around this because she has the DM from James brand page where they were saying, Hey, you're the winner of this. Can you please give us your information? She sent them the address did not receive the palette. But here, let me allow her to tell you what happened. Hi, this video is for James Charles. And if you're not James Charles, keep on scrolling. If you are, hey girl or keep on watching, you can do whatever you want. Anyways, to the point, I won one of the painted giveaways for Christmas. I think it was day 11, here's proof, screenshot, everything you need to see. And I've never received my palette and I'm not trying to be that girl, but I really wanted that palette and I was looking so forward to it. I was so excited that I won a giveaway and I've never gotten it. I reached out to Painted on Instagram and turns out James Charles replied back to me and I told him my house burned down and everything and I was freaking out that I was talking to James Charles. James, if you're seeing this, you probably remember me. 
you said that you would get with your team and try to figure out where the package went and I was like okay I completely understand and I've been understanding and I waited and I waited and still no pallet so I reached out again and asked if I could send my new address that I was staying at since my house burned down and y'all said yes send me the address and I did and I still haven't received my pallet and I'm not trying to make this video out of hate. I don't want any of you guys to hate on James Charles. Like, this is not his fault. The package probably just got lost. And I understand I could just buy the palette, but I won I won it in a giveaway. Why would I buy it? And like I said, this giveaway was during Christmas time. So it's been four to five months since the giveaway. So I've been very, very patient. I've waited on this package. I don't think it's coming. So that's why I'm making this video. <laughs> James, if you see this, please, can you send me a palette? I would absolutely die. And I want to try it out so bad. <laughs> Love y'all so much. Bye. So I'm a little confused why it has come to this point that she had to actually make a video on TikTok to have people tag James down in the comment section to be like, hey, I've had all this correspondence with you, but also your brand, and there is still no palette in my hand. I really want the palette. Why has it taken so long? It's the fact that Painted is not just James Charles, and there's actually a team of people that work for him. So the fact that we are going into May and everybody has dropped the ball in that company, like, are we surprised? He better make this right for this lady. He needs to send her that palette. He needs to send her all those doo-doo paints, and he also needs to send her that that big ass bunch. I just don't care how everybody at the company was like, oh. There is a little bit of other James Charles controversy going on over on TikTok because he did a live stream and he called someone fatty. Why won't TikTok get off your feed? Mm, block me then, fatty. Not my problem. Your feed is giving you what you want to see. So you can say whatever you want, pretend you don't like me, but we both know why you're watching. Okay, we both know. Let's be for real. Somebody was saying like, why are you on my For You page? And he said, I don't know, fatty. And people are upset about it. So James made a TikTok where he was kind of like mocking it. It was like James Charles on a live stream. And I think the audio was from like a Dance Moms clip. Well, people are never gonna let James Charles forget the things that he has admitted to on social media. The victims that he has apologized to because there were many people over on TikTok that actually stitched his video where he was like mocking the situation. And they were just reminding him of one thing. Uh, okay, really? fatty, 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 fatty. At least fat people can lose weight. You can never lose your attraction to children. Y'all, I thought that we were finally in a safe space and we finally got away from the Glamzilla lipstick hack over on TikTok. You remember the one where she was literally promoting huffing to her followers by spraying a whole can of one size setting spray up her nostrils? Well, there is a TikToker named Makeup by Soli that made a video in response to Glamzilla's where he was saying that her lipstick hack did not work. And he shared a technique that he thinks is what she actually did. Something that I did not find out about the Glamzilla lipstick hack video until after I posted my video was that the two videos right before she was wearing the exact same outfit she did a lip stain she literally was trying out a lip stain and was talking about how she couldn't get it off her lips so could that have played a part in this little lipstick hack well in his technique he actually put setting powder onto the paper towel where it looks like there's nothing on it they're lying to you it's 3 p.m in the beauty community and i'm already being called a liar and she is in fact lying to us let me show you how she actually did it what she did was apply lipstick to her lips let me apply it real quick and i'll be right back i know it looks messy i don't wear lipstick i'm just doing this to show you guys what she actually did so bear with me so she actually grabs a powder and she puts it on the place where she's gonna blot her lips one second one second you'll see what i'm talking about here's some powder and then i'm just gonna apply it here to show you guys that what i'm talking about is actually what happened it looks normal right wrong it has powder on it and this is where she blots her lips and when she blots her lips the powder does go onto the lipstick which makes it transfer proof so look nothing looks wrong right wrong because obviously when you apply setting spray on top of powder which i'm going to show you it makes it waterproof Let's see if it actually transfers. Case closed. Now stop bothering me with this video. The setting spray is actually good, so I don't know why she had to do that. I think she's trying to get a sponsorship, and I don't think she does this on a daily because applying the setting spray made it burn. Don't be fooled and do not send hate to anybody, and I love you guys. Well, Makeup by Sully has now updated his followers over on TikTok that Glamzilla has actually blocked him. He is thinking that the reason she actually blocked him is because of that video where he was saying this does not work and that she is lying to you. I was not ready for that. If you don't know what's happening, you probably heard about Lipstick Gate. I posted a video debunking Glamzilla's 
lipstick heck regarding the one size and the lipstick and whatever she was trying to do. And I debunked it. And it did not sit well with her. Even though every single beauty creator on TikTok made a video debunking it. But my video had all the truth in it, which hurt her feelings and made her block me. And I'm pretty sure she contacted TikTok about me because any video I try to make about this situation gets put under review and it won't let me post it. So this is my final chance of trying to talk about the situation. Listen, I don't care if anybody blocks me because I decided to speak up about the truth. Lying to your followers and millions of people who are influenced by you is not the move. Money can always come, but trust, once it's broken, it can never be fixed. I just want to tell everybody, be careful with who you guys trust on social media, especially makeup influencers. They're not always going to give you their honest opinion. If money is involved, they're a whole different person. But yeah, because my video had the truth in it, that's why she decided to block me, which makes sense. I do want to say though, if you're a creator in the beauty community and you cannot handle criticism, what's the point? Especially when you're lying. If the heat is too much to handle, leave the kitchen. That's all I gotta say. Whenever I see a video come out about Glamzilla over on TikTok, I immediately go to the comment section. And I cannot tell you guys how many f***ing comments I see of people saying that ever since Glamzilla has lost weight, she's had a completely different attitude. And Glamzilla is seeing these comments because she actually uploaded a video where she was talking about her weight loss and how it has definitely changed the way that she acts. She turned it into a story about how she's just evolving and this is just her like evolution ever since she's lost like 226 pounds, I believe she said it was. Recently, I've been seeing a lot of comments saying how much I've changed since I lost 226 pounds. And the truth is, I have. <laughs> so let's talk about it. I know you see me as a beauty influencer or just someone on your For You page, but I'm just a woman evolving. And I'll admit, it's scary, but this feeling isn't new to me at all. Like, I remember this feeling when I got my first training bra. It was at Walmart, $11 on clearance. My mom <laughs> bought it for me. It had a little turtle on it right here. And when I went to school, I wore a white shirt and my best friend said, hey, you have a turtle on your shirt. I was so excited to tell her I was wearing a bra. And when I think about it, I felt that same feeling of evolution the first day of high school, the first day of college, and after it kind of came to a halt until I got my weight loss surgery. Like I'm evolving again. And when I think about all those moments where I felt like I was evolving, I didn't know what I was doing. I, I still don't know what I'm doing. And I think that and I think there's a beauty to that. Like I remember I was just so happy to get a bra, get into college. But as you get older, I feel like it gets a little more complicated and just being a human and growing and evolving just gets a lot more scarier. And doing it all online, I think amplifies that fear like so much more. Cause even though these are just videos, you're watching me literally change. You're watching me evolve. I don't know. So what I guess I'm trying to say is like, evolution is a beautiful thing. And I think we should all embrace it because as women, as people, we weren't made or created to be stagnant. You know what I mean? And when I think about it, that's why we grow, that's why we change, and that's why we become adults, right? I just never knew it was gonna be this scary and I never knew I was gonna do it in front of all of you. And I hope after you watch this video, you're reminded of all the moments in your life where you've evolved. And although I mentioned all those big moments of my evolution, it was actually all the small moments in between those big ones that helped me become me and helped you become you. So I hope this video reminds you of how far you've come and how much more life there is to live. And after all of it, the most beautiful part about being woman, about being human, is the evolution of us. Here's the evolution. Girl, they're not worried about you evolving. What they are upset with is because a lot of them say that you have a stank ass an attitude a lot of the time. And another reason why people are saying that they don't follow you anymore is because they think that you lie all the time when it comes to sponsorships and you're just doing it for the money. Let's keep it honest. This is not about your evolution. Did you evolve into a stink ass bitch? Because just keeping it real with y'all, I have met people that have worked with Glamzilla or have just like been around her in a social setting. And they say like what you see with Glamzilla today is the same Glamzilla before the weight loss surgery. I don't know what to believe because I just found out about Glamzilla like what? 
two years ago almost now. So I'm just saying I do not have all the knowledge on her. So if anybody out there has been a longtime supporter of Glamzilla or has known about Glamzilla for a good long while, is she the same today as she used to be or are people making that shit up? Y'all, I think it is almost time for Tati's time to shine when it comes to the 2019 by sister drama. But we talked about this before. Do we think that Tati's ever going to come out and say anything further on the situation considering her last video, The Breaking the Silence, did not do so well? And a lot of people think no, but there is a lot of people that think that she is because she is over on TikTok now and she is starting to like mention James Charles and like Jeffree Star a lot more than usual. Imagine my surprise the other morning when I woke up and somebody sent me a clip of Tati's video where she said that she was watching one of my videos to get the tea about the Urban Decay Foundation that makes you look like a corpse and also that Manny said that it was good and Jeffree said that it wasn't. When you do an unfiltered close-up, like good lord, you're gonna see everything. I thought his skin looked really nice. I felt like it wore really well. And then we have Jeffrey who hated it. And I saw him hate it in a Nick Snyder video that I was watching, which I don't normally watch drama videos, but I had to watch this one because it had to do with makeup and foundation. And it felt like, okay, what's everyone saying about this? So I did get a little bit of info that way. There was a time where Tati would never mention Jeffrey or James on social media and she tried to avoid the situation as much as possible. But now that she's getting closer to the end of this litigation with Halo Beauty and everything that's going on with that, she's kind of opening up a little bit more over on TikTok. Every time she's on one of her live streams, of course, James Charles or Jeffree Star always gets brought up. Somebody wants her to say one of the lines from the Bi Sister video, or they just want to know a little bit more about it. She's actually talked about it a little bit in several of her YouTube videos recently. Recently, she did a video where she was talking about Too Faced and how she's finally going to go back to using their products now that they have new ownership. God, the guy that used to own Too Faced was so crazy. Do you remember like the Rich Lives Matter cake and also how his sister was always going after Jeffree Star and apparently she was going after Tati Westbrook as well? I did not know that. I did not know that Tati had drama with Too Faced like that. While I'm fussing with my brows for a moment, I'll share some tea about Too Faced that I didn't even know, like legitimately promise you I did not even know this. But right, oh, not to bring up other things I don't want to bring up, oh, but when Bi Sister dropped, literally the same day, I feel I went on Twitter and I saw a campaign for Born This Way, and James Charles was involved with this campaign, and it was his photo, and the slogan was something along the lines of, I'm a liar, and I was like, oh, 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 like, oh my god, they're all gonna come for me. And like, it was so uncomfortable. I never anticipated any of these events to go as wide or big as they did. And that was such a shock to my system. And it definitely makes me take pause with what I say now, even though I feel like things have changed dramatically and people don't hinge into drama the same way. Like they touch base with it and like maybe it's sensational for a moment, but then it gets moved on and, and we're onto something new. Back then, it felt like if you made a move that the public had anything to say about it was just like we're sinking our teeth into this and we're not letting go and literally i can't go on like a live or do anything anywhere without someone saying time and place or like drudging up the past and just really going in on me and it makes me feel like you know will i ever outrun that you know i don't know but during that time like so many things happened that lined up that just should not have happened that i had no way of knowing about it it ended up being just bigger than I thought. I think, yeah, I don't know if we'll share that story or not, but that one, that happened, and I was just like, oh my gosh. My beef with Too Faced was just personal. And you can say like, oh, big baby, but like, it's my channel. I can say what I want to say and like what I like and support brands that I want to, and I don't have to support brands that I don't vibe with, and like, that's my prerogative. I will also share that during that time, you know, and this is like how influencers would support one another. Like back when I was on good terms, I knew that James was working with Too Faced a ton. So if we were ever doing anything together and I wanted to make a joke or roast Too Faced or say something that I felt was on brand for me and honest from my heart, he'd be like, no, 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 please don't. And I, you know, adhered to that. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's interesting. Um, okay. You know what? Thinking back to that whole bi sister drama, that voice memo that Jeffree Star claims that he has that people say that they have heard that is like apparently so damning against James. And it's no secret by now, it has been like whispered around and it is allegedly one of the Dolan twins that is on the voice memo. Well, I completely forgot that in December of 2018, I uploaded a video about how James Charles makes the Dolan twins uncomfortable and they want to get like the f away from him. James actually commented on that video. So I just went back and I looked, I had it pinned and he did not delete it. So I wanted to read that for you guys because this this was before any of that shit came out about James Charles. When did Tati upload her video in 2019? So the comment says, this video is a 
mess. My friendship with the twins is nothing more than that. A friendship. Our flirting and his rejection is literally a stick for our videos that fans enjoy and because I used to have a crush on Grayson three years ago. Videos like this, assuming what goes on behind the scenes, especially to a large platform, are incredibly toxic. Even if you're not implying anything, the comments below this video have started a disgusting conversation with very serious allegations. Are those the same kind of allegations that you're referring to when you had to say sorry to your victims and that you were desperate? And I finally, finally came to a conclusion. It's sucks and it is ridiculously embarrassing to admit this but i think i have to and that is that i'm desperate and in case you guys are wondering why i made a video saying james charles is making the dolan twins extremely uncomfortable here's a compilation of one of their holiday videos and it is so cringe like a big nutcracker <laughs> i don't know if i'm still gonna collect nutcrackers <laughs> oh my god <gasps> ready <laughs> Set. What is Go! It? <laughs> oh, what the <laughs> Just kidding! Okay. <laughs> and we got you some um, uh, multi tool so you can really stab something. Okay. Hopefully, me when we're camping. <laughs> uh, we have some rope in case you want to tie something up. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you know how much I love survival and, and camping <laughs> and just like nature and then being with the wild. Uh -huh. Okay, it's good enough. Uh, <laughs> What's going on? Ow! Alright, we loaded up, we loaded up the, uh, the mans. I love a good load. And, okay. <laughs> and now we're gonna, we're gonna take him to the location of his gift. I'll be just, let me just measure the rest. If you don't want to stress about it, you probably could just wrap yourself up and give it to James. Oh my god. Like, butt naked or something. Going into that. I am. Okay. Alright, hold on. And push them together. Push the tips together. Oh, Don't say that. I'm not pushing the tips together. Stop. And then my stick can go into the box. Oh, there's stick in the box. Oh, 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 oh no, no, no. Jesus. Jesus. Happy birthday. Dear Santa, I hope you can give my good friend James a nice boyfriend so I can have a little more personal space. We need two larges for our big beefy daddies. Oh, for Christmas is just two simple things this year. My first wish would be for my dear friend James to get a boyfriend so I can get a little bit more personal space. Right, but I don't do relationships. Oh, you don't? Okay. Um, well, I was really hoping that that could happen. There are so many people that are still interested in Bye Sister and the whole drama getting thing over on TikTok. And I came across a clip that somebody uploaded of Shane Dawson's live stream. Do you remember when Shane Dawson went live on Instagram when Tati's video uploaded the Breaking My Silence? And he was saying that she's lying and oh my God, the fake tears and all of that. I forgot how golden that live stream was because it was just like the whole entire situation was crumbling. He should not have done that live stream. I'm sure if he had a PR team, they were probably like, oh, oh my God. Why the f did you click go live? New video. So how is it that so many editorial outlets knew that something was coming before I? Because you messed with drama channels. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. My video for days. The night before I did film, Jeffrey sent me what he claimed was an audio file from an alleged victim and told me to listen to the pain in her voice. The audio was clearly a small portion oh of my the god. conversation. It wasn't enough for me to contact the authorities. It was enough to scare me. Well, then why would you make a video on the matter claiming these allegations? Because she is a I can't, I can't. I don't want to say mean things about people. This is insane. This is insane. This person literally, oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, sorry, keep pressing play. I need to get through this video so I can, oh my God. As a victim of abuse myself, oh my God, you are so manipulative. To think of facing public, you're fake. You're fake crying. You are fake crying. You are fake crying. That is not real. Oh my God. 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 I was. I have been. Oh, oh my God. That is not. I made no mention of it in my video. Oh my God. Get off. The night before posting my video by sister, oh my god, I texted Shane sharing my concerns for James Charles. Was it was just a whole mess, but honestly, you know what? And I was saying this to Dustin the other day. I think that Tati should be allowed to say whatever the fuck she wants to about the 2019 drama and everything that went on. I think that she should be able to shade Jeffree Star. She should be able to shade James Charles any way that she 
wants to because James gets to shade the whole situation and he was literally the one that was called out and now we are all aware of his disgusting ways. But also every single year, Jeffree Star goes on a podcast tour, it seems like, and he's always talking about Tati. He's always talking about James and he's always talking about that situation. I am not sure for certain if Tati is ever going to bring this up in like a full video and she's going to tell her side of the thing because I understand that Tati was a full grown adult when she uploaded that video and she made the adult decision to go forward with it. But I'm also not sitting here thinking that Tati was not a little bit manipulated. What do you think? Do you think that Tati should go further into detail about everything that happened in 2019 and leading up to the whole by sister situation? Because honestly, she is never going to get away from it on social media. Everywhere that she goes live, every single comment section that she has, somebody is going to bring it up. She's going to have to start blocking words. She's going to have to start getting moderators because they're going to continue. I'm just wondering if Tati is going to battle either James or Jeffrey. It seems like everyone is going live over on TikTok these days. Jeffrey is always live 24 seven. James Charles now does live streams over on TikTok. Tati is doing her live streams over on TikTok. Everyone is always over there. So I wonder if there will be a battle. Who do you think would win? I think that Jeffrey would probably snipe himself. You know how he likes to go in and allegedly, allegedly recycle the tips. But with all that said, everyone, that is it for this video. I hope that you did enjoy it. Please leave me some kind of food emoji down below or just tell me what you are having for dinner because we ordered pizza. I cannot wait for it to get here. I just got the update from DoorDash that it is actually being picked up. So I will see you guys all in my next video. Bye.